to learn standing kho kho students should be forming a circle and standing in pairs right behind each other uh, the first rule is that you have uh, that if you are the chaser uh, the person who is being chased then you can't uh, come inside the circle unless unless and until you want to give another person a pass and if you are the chaser the person who is chasing the person or the other one uh, then you can go inside the circle uh, as it would be easier for you to catch The rule is when you want to give a pass, you need to come in front and say go, but you don't need to do any action. If you do any action, that will not be counted as as a go. And the final rule is that you can't go far away from the circle, or or you will be on the circle. Yes, you have to be on the circle. Out, out, out. Not out, not out. चलो प्रचित आउट
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back for today's session. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome for uh, today's session. So, first, want to quickly check uh, about yesterday's session. How did it go? Did you learn something new yesterday? How was yesterday's class on physical literacy and few guidelines for the curriculum? Did you find something useful? What did you find useful? What do you remember right now from yesterday's class? What did you find useful from last class? It's useful. Okay. What were the main point you remember? In can you see now decision making? Okay. Very useful. Very useful. Physical literacy. You liked it. Okay. Very useful. very useful motivation was a new word classified child to class wise program government students active participation vijaya story you find very interesting okay uh, how to approach the student okay you remember that teaching methodology was new rajeshekar ji saying that teaching methodology was new it discuss about various kind of method of teaching how to handle the kid with the physical and psychological factor okay okay uh, very useful class perfect so we are able to recollect yesterday's key point about motivation confidence competence knowledge and understanding very good that's what you uh, recollect 
very useful thank you david ji so let's go for today's class uh, today's class is very very interesting and uh, extension of what we discussed yesterday we talk about physical literacy curriculum and we also talked about the minor games that minor games are a very critical part of the younger age children but it is something which can be relevant for all age groups because of the the beauty of the minor game and the participation opportunities so today session is on minor games and i am happy to uh, welcome professor ashwini kumar datta who is a retired professor from lnip gwalior he has decade of experience in physical education and uh, to support the presentation my colleague zaina will be presenting uh, the session and professor datta will be leading the session dr datta I, i welcome you to session sir thank you dr amit uh, a very good afternoon to all the teachers uh, from tamil nadu as uh, dr amit has informed you that in uh, today session we'll be covering few uh, interesting activities few interesting games in this minor games session and normally what we find uh, as far as our present situation is concerned children are uh, am i audible now please say yes or no am i audible yes that is okay thank you thank you then normally children are nowadays reluctant to participate in physical activities there are numerous reasons for it one is the academic load on the children second thing could be the uh, attitude of the parents as well as the teachers usually parents they guide the children yes you study study and study so that you will have a very good career in future similarly as far as teachers are concerned academic teachers are concerned they also wish that children should devote more and more time on uh, academic subjects so that probably their result will be very good and once the result is good probably at least uh, the institute the school can boast of yes so many students appeared so many first class so many distinctions and so on and so forth and whenever such a scenario is there children they time and again emphasize they yes they should take part in one or the uh, they should uh, just study 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 as a result of this probably probably their mental side is very well developed as far as academics is concerned but at the cost of the physical health of the person what we want here is that we want that all the children who are studying in a school they should participate in one or the other kind of physical activity so that as far as these children are concerned they develop a holistic personality they have an all round development and with the result probably they will be healthy individuals and once they are healthy they will be able to make significant contribution in the uh, as far as the, our country is concerned so keeping this scenario in mind and at the same time we are aware that even people children are becoming obese nowadays because of lack of uh, activity as a result of this what we want is we want to change the scenario from inactive to that of active state and here physical literacy can play a very very significant role whereby in case we emphasize the, on the children's participation we do not want 
that every child should become uh, Sachin Tendulkar or uh, maybe P.T. Usha or something of that sort. What we want is that they should have a genuine interest in games and sports. They should participate in games and sports. Similarly, what we say is World Health Organization, WHO. WHO has also stated that all the children, those who are from 7 to 16 years, 18 years of age, they should participate in physical activity, in moderate physical activity for one hour daily, for one hour daily. Of, of course, at times this may not be possible in school, but at least one period per day, if it could be devoted for physical education, probably it will go a long way in ensuring that our children are healthy. Not taking much of your time, I'll be proceeding further. Next slide, please. Uh, these are the minor games we have been organizing in different parts of the country. Uh, first picture is of uh, uh, Himachal Pradesh. This is the highest village in, uh, of our country where we had organized few minor uh, games there and children, they really loved it. They enjoyed thoroughly participating in that. And second one is of Uttarakhand whereby children also, they did participate in sporting physical activities in some sort of minor games. We proceed further. In today's session, we'll be covering the entire session in four parts. First part is meaning of minor games. That is, what do we mean by the term minor games or what do we understand by the term minor games so that probably we are on the same wavelength. Second is the importance of minor games or the significance of minor games as far as the children are concerned, in which way it will be beneficial to them. And third aspect is from the point of view of physical education teacher, that is, while they are teaching minor games, what are the factors, what are those aspects which they have to keep it in mind so that probably they may be able to effectively teach minor games to the children. And the fourth is, and the main important aspect is, even 50% of the importance will be given to this. This is presentation of minor games. At times, some videos will be there and some strip pictures will be there. Even sometimes what we say in physical education, a picture speaks more than 1,000 words. So keeping that thing in mind, we'll be showing the, some videos and pictures. And uh, uh, wherever possible, I will be explaining the picture also so that everybody, uh, the, as far as the game is concerned, it becomes clear to each and everyone. Now we proceed further, meaning of minor games. As for minor game is concerned, the important feature, important aspect of minor game is, or important component of minor game is, it provides fun and enjoyment to all the participants. The games are such, which are, which in case of a child participates, he gets a lot of thrill, a lot of enjoyment after having participated in the game or even while participation. And sometimes what we say is our program has to be very, very attractive, very, very good. Then only as far as children are concerned, they will uh, run towards the play field and they will participate in minor games. That is fun and enjoyment is the first aspect. Second is uh, whenever we make children play minor games, we have one ulterior motive in mind. We, what we want is that there should be some sort of developmental purpose also. It is all, not only this, children come there, children enjoy, ha ha ha, and they go back to their uh, classrooms. No, that is not our purpose. Our purpose is that there should be holistic development, all around development of a person, and this all-round development of a person is from physical aspect. That is, a child should become healthy. A child should be physically fit. And as far as whenever a child participates in uh, physical activities, one is bound to improve in various uh, uh, fitness components. Fitness components could be uh, strength could be there, agility could be there, power could be there, flexibility, coordination, balance, etc., etc. These are some such uh, characteristics or components of physical fitness. These can be developed through participation in physical activities or participation in minor games. Second aspect is the cognitive aspect. 
cognitive aspect deals with the mental processes thinking uh, of an individual there probably as for a child is concerned child becomes aware of the rules and regulations of a game a bit of history about that game sometimes what we can say is these games are of indi these games are indigenous games then probably as for this indigenous games are concerned any game which has been originated in our country that becomes say indigenous games likewise maybe a bit of history of that particular game could be there so this is how the uh, cognitive development occurs not only this even in this also sometimes whenever a child performs a particular movement maybe throwing is there how one has to throw the ball in, in maybe in case if it is dominant hand is there then with the result the other foot uh, should be maybe in case if the ball is being held by the right hand in case one is able to is throwing the ball from the right hand left foot should be forward some some such things are to be there which individual learns while participating or maybe as for dribbling is concerned how one has to dribble so could be some such things are there these are about how and why of a movement this is very very significant third aspect is effective aspect in effective aspect normally we say there is behavioral change in an individual because our physical education program is usually organized program it's a systematic program and whenever a physical education teacher is present in a class he ensures that all the students they behave in a decent manner behave properly and as far as behavior is concerned probably they may develop some sort of sportsmanship qualities as far as this sportsmanship qualities are concerned maybe obedience to rules and regulations and may and uh, accepting the decision of the uh, referee or the umpire or whoever is uh, uh, this uh, organizing the game so some such things are there then probably other important aspect is which will of course will play dividend in the long run this is about the attitude a very very uh, positive attitude individual will adopt and third aspect under this is the games this is the heart and soul of minor games the the minor games could be organized in a limited area because we assume that as far as the metropolitan cities are concerned the area is shrinking day by day very limited area is there and it may not be possible for a physical education teacher to organize uh, a football uh, on a regular football field or maybe hockey on a regular hockey field then where, wherever the small areas are there minor games is a boon for the children boon for the physical education teacher same thing is there the minor games could be organized without equipment that even if there is no equipment physical education teacher can organize things uh, in a, in a innovative manner so that children get the benefit of participation it could also be with the help of equipment because whenever some equipment is added it is it provides some variety and whenever variety is there in case if some colorful equipment is there children automatically are attracted towards participation in minor games and the last aspect under this is flexible rules it has got very very uh, flexible rules maybe uh, maybe say a game like hockey hockey we in case if we are we have to play the game we cannot change the rules but in minor games in case if you are playing in tamil nadu the game the rules could be slightly different if you are playing in uh, kashmir the rules could be slightly different keeping the topography of the area keeping the number of participants in mind and keep, keeping the facilities available so the the rules could be uh, flexible in nature and the fourth aspect is uh, and this is what we have to emphasize time and again that we have to engage all the children simultaneously it is unlike participation in a relay race whenever a relay race is being conducted three four persons they are active whereas rest of the uh, participants they are inactive what we want is whenever a class comes to us all the children should become active and to in today's session we will be learning about some those games whereby all the children could be active so that probably they get uh, they derive benefits of this and uh, the challenging students we have to uh, provide activities from simple to difficult 
difficult to complex so that will be depending upon the ability initially they should everyone should be able to do it then whenever we provide some sort of a challenge some sort of a difficult situation is there probably once they put in effort they should be able to overcome the challenge and then they will have a, a psychological edge they will have a lot of confidence in themselves so this is in a nutshell is the meaning of the minor games hope uh, i uh, things are very clear and we are on this we should be on the same wavelength next is a uh, second aspect is significance of minor games what is the importance of minor games as far as children are concerned and first and foremost is attracts students children are attracted uh, towards the play field so that probably they may be able to take part and with the result that they will have a real good experience whenever anything which is of their interest which is of their need and interest probably definitely because normally we say play is a fundamental need of the child once the need is there and once the attractive activities are provided they will be flocking to the uh, they, they will be running to the play field so that that is to in order to participate that is one second aspect in this is we wish that children should develop in, especially in the initial stages primary school and even after that middle school they should develop fundamental motor skills fundamental motor skills here we could categorize them into locomotor skills non locomotor skills and manipulative skills this could be one way of also at times we could call it movement education or sometimes what we say is in simple words we can say a child should learn how to jog how to run how to throw how to catch how to jump etc etc these things are the running jumping throwing catching uh, these uh, aspects should be developed in the children and once these are developed in the initial stages and then we have to again further emphasize on how the skill could be used in a game situation because in a game situation uh, situation is always dynamic it is ever changing and keeping that scenario in mind probably how they have to apply that skill maybe immediate catching the ball as fast as possible and immediately throwing it so maybe say there is some sort of element of a, a competition is there in case if they delay it it will be difficult to gain advantage so this is what is important fundamental motor skills and their application in the game third aspect is here fun pleasure and enjoyment we have been always emphasizing this is the main important aspect then only children will come to us if they have uh, this uh, unique experiences if they uh, if we provide activities as per their interest and liking definitely they will enjoy participating in that and with the result that they will continue to be uh, on the play field so that probably they enjoy participating in that activities and the fourth aspect is what we want is we want children to come to the play fields no, the, this as a classrooms are concerned almost uh, in case if 6 hours class uh, classes a school is there 5 hours they are inside the classroom but only thing is it gives them an opportunity at least to, they should come out uh, at least for 35 to 40 minutes depending upon the duration of the uh, class and then they should play in the open field where by running jumping is possible or throwing is possible without any injury and then with the result that even outdoors is there usually there will be fresh air will be there and they will uh, once they perform activities at least running jump uh, running and tagging games could be there so based upon that at least uh, their functioning will also improve significantly functioning of the uh, different systems of the body uh, in a in a nutshell what we want is they will be coming to the play fields next aspect is uh, health benefits children will definitely be more healthier once they participate in physical activities in terms of physical fitness as i had explained earlier it could be we may say muscular strength of an individual may be improved or muscle tone of a child may improve it could also be the muscular endurance of an individual 
it may be as far as the heart functioning of the uh, maybe in terms of physical fitness we say as far as the muscles are concerned then bones it is a known fact research has proved uh, that as a result of participating participation in physical activities the bones also strengthen they also improve significantly so maybe uh, similarly maybe as far as other aspects are concerned maybe some sort of mental benefits will occur as far as the child is concerned the child feels relaxation or uh, once we provide a different kind of physical uh, different kind of activity to the child uh, maybe maybe psychologically it is wonderful for an individual and there in terms of health normally sometimes what you say is as far as child is concerned uh, uh, maybe a uh, child uh, learns how to lose a match and how to even come out of the uh, losing uh, position that is one will give uh, one will not say die one will always say yes i have to try i have to try till the final whistle is blown and with the result is some such uh, aspects are there these are being developed in the children next is motivation motivation again uh, a something we go normally what we say is uh, inspiration it should come from sometimes within the individual there could be two types of no, normally there are two types of motivation one is extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation what we want is in case if it could be intrinsic motivation a child loves participation in an activity so that his health may improve upon so that as far as his uh, posture is concerned it may improve upon or maybe as far as the uh, child is concerned it could also be a, a motivation that whenever a child goes to participate uh, in physical activities or minor games he will make friends he will uh, try his level best at times uh, another time kind of motivation could be that he wants to win over the others or a child whenever one goes there he wants that i should perspire i should put in lot of effort so some such things are there this will is required for a child next is hope uh, this uh, my voice is clear uh, teachers kindly suggest uh, thank you other other teachers maybe some responses from teachers uh, yes or no okay thank you thank you teachers great Th thanks a lot now next is our communication the child communicates with the uh, fellow students and then because at least they learn to uh, express their feelings what all is there in their mind so with the result that as a communication is concerned maybe leave a uh, uh, few children alone and once they are talking and uh, they will find one or the other game to particip participate in so this is something very very important through communication at least they will be able to convince others let's play this game or there could be few choices are there or the based on choices uh, they will decide which game which they will be playing okay thank you L lakshmi uh, next is social skills children will develop social skills that is they will learn to cooperate with each other sometimes patiently waiting for their turns standing in a line and then individual is not that important it is the team which is important one should not play selfish game one should cooperate with others so that probably one becomes a team man this is what we want a individual should be a team man because this is a quality which is looked after by sought after by multinational companies multinational companies they want that children are concerned 
children, any any employee. One should be able to move, work in a team. Then only the uh, uh, as far as the objective of the uh, company is concerned, that may be attained. Then again, teamwork is very very significant. Next one is sportsmanship. A child will become a real good sports person. That is, as explained earlier, that uh, probably some uh, qualities, say discipline, dedication, devotion, and strong positive attitude, that is never say die, give 100% to whatever you are doing, as some such qualities are being developed in individuals as a result of participation in physical activities or as well as in minor games. We'll move further. Next, please. Then one important aspect is, normally we say, uh, activity of a child can be developed through participation in physical activities. Because whenever a child has to, child faces a challenge, then child starts thinking, how I could overcome this challenge? And this leads to some suggest some solutions of whichever is being faced by the children. So creativity, because sometimes whenever we see a small child doing various movements, we say, yes, he is very, very creative. His brain is functioning very effectively. So this is what is creativity is there. Something uh, new is being designed by the children based upon the situation which they are facing. Next is offensive and defensive techniques. A child learns how to go for an attack. What are the aspects one should keep in mind so that uh, probably one will be able to dominate the opponents. Same thing could be there about defensive techniques. In which way probably they should play so that probably attackers, they do not get an opportunity to penetrate into the defensive uh, system. So likewise, uh, probably, uh, Whenever this uh, analysis is being done by the participants, this is what we want. The children should analyze their game. What are the good points? What are the uh, weak points? So, to, so that probably they will be more effective in their participation. Next one is management tool. Physical education teacher is, as per my opinion, or probably even others will agree that they are the management guru. They have lots and lots of management skills. Because it is unlike an academic teacher, whereby when the academic teacher goes to the classroom, children are already sitting in a proper position, blackboard is there, or maybe smart board may be there, and they may uh, start teaching. It's, but in physical education class, whenever children come, Teacher has to start from the scratch, making them stand in a straight line and then giving them some sort of warm-up activities. And uh, prior to that, even arrangement of equipment, uh, etc. Oh, those things are there. This is what uh, a teacher manages the classes. Not only this, then there are lots and lots of opportunity whenever some inter-class competitions are organized or intramural competitions are organized, inter-school competitions are organized, or maybe uh, taking this uh, team out for uh, some inter-school competition or some other uh, practice matches are there. So maybe so much opportunities are being uh, the, with the physical education teacher and teacher assigns different responsibilities different roles to the students. To some, he will be making a leader. To someone, he will be making a captain. And others may be the followers of the team members. By giving the, by discharging their functions, as a children are concerned, they develop some sort of leadership qualities. Or along with that, even the teamwork is again a very, very significant aspect. 
So maybe what uh, we say is sometimes even tour management. Whenever a tour is taken from one place to another, physical education teacher is the first choice. Yes, he should be accompany the uh, uh, students. Reason being, he has that knack of controlling the uh, children, and how he controls it, he assigns responsibilities, and then that's how he is able to control things nicely. Next one is. Uh, I now, because I have been speaking for quite some time, and I need your some responses. When you were student studying in a school, can you remember any favorite, uh, your favorite minor game? Which game you used to play? Kindly go to the chat box and uh, uh, suggest which game you used to play, minor game. I need, uh, I'm waiting for your responses, teachers. Hide and see, three deep, very good dog and the bone. Wonderful fire on the mountain, fisherman net. Great, wonderful responses. Picking the tail, okay, plucking the tail, picking or fire on the mountain, tunnel relay, dog and the bone, foot cricket, plug the tail, thank you. Great responses. Uh, Wonderful! Uh, I am so, I'm so thrilled to uh, read your responses. Uh, very uh, good responses from your side, and uh, uh, and uh, please, teachers, thank you. And let's stop uh, now chatting. And now, what we'll be doing is uh, we will be proceeding to our third aspect is about the considerations for teaching minor games. That. As a physical education teacher, what are those aspects which we have to keep it in mind while teaching the minor games? Thank you, teachers. Wonderful responses. I'm overwhelmed by the by your responses. Thank you. Okay, now we move further. Next is uh, when a teacher is teaching minor games, we will we should ensure that some advanced preparation is made by the teacher. Kindly remember your training days when you were uh, getting training in a professional uh, institute, professional college. There, you used to take lesson plans. In lesson plans, probably we used to even write and then uh, uh, arrange all equipment prior to this or do some sort of marking. And then we used to take a class. Here, we do not want that you should write uh, the entire thing. What, what we want is that you should just uh, maintain some sort of a diary that this game was played today. Name of the game will be sufficient. So with the result that probably we will know that we will not be repeating this game or maybe in case if we are concentrating on agility of a person, Probably then uh, all aspects of physical fitness need to be covered. Of course, uh, this week we have given agility, these games. Next week we are giving some sort of uh, coordination games we are uh, uh, giving them or we, we are giving them some sort of endurance games we are giving them. So that probably this will be a more of a systematic preparation in advance. And in this also, uh, normally what we do is, uh, before the class comes to the teacher, teacher prepares the, uh, keeps the equipment ready, marking is done so that the time of the children is not wasted. That is one. Second thing is, once the time is not wasted, is, this is related to the second aspect. Second aspect is, children will get more and more time to participate. This is what our aim is. We want the children should have the maximum participation within uh, 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 45 minutes. That is uh, what our idea is. Next is the safety first. Safety first is, thank you teachers, kindly uh, concentrate here and uh, I'll be giving you still more opportunities. Four corners, thank you. Uh, safety first, because whenever we are playing minor games, it is the responsibility of the teacher to ensure that no accident occurs, no injury takes place. So maybe whatever precautions are to be there, sometimes what we say is whenever the class comes, first and foremost thing is after assembly, we go for a better warming up. 
some sort of bending and stretching exercises are there so that no injury may be there maybe with respect to safety uh, as for the play uh, play field is concerned or the equipment is concerned all aspects need to be considered and the last point under this is sabse uh, important point is involving all children simultaneously we want that whenever children are playing minor game all children should play together this is what is the philosophy of minor games as far as my uh, interpretation is concerned after having almost four decades of experience i have come to the conclusion that all the children should participate uh, in a best possible manner in a fullest possible extent then only it will be meaningful rather than making few participate as in relay so probably in today's lesson a uh, today's session you will be learning uh, which are those games in which all the children could be involved simultaneously and what steps we can take what procedure we can ad adopt uh, that it will, will be very very significant and the next point is cooperation and fair play Uh, we should ensure that all the children they cooperate with each other they follow the rules and regulations then things become better and this is uh, uh, next aspect is uh, a modest winner and a graceful loser even if probably we should uh, ensure that even if the child wins or even if a team wins they are not too much excited about winning or even if it team loses they are not uh, uh, to, uh, they should not blame themselves or they shouldn't call among themselves that uh, they should be modest in their behavior this is what we want is that uh, whether it is win or lose that is uh, unimportant only thing is children should learn to give their best this is what we have in mind the next is participation is more important what we want is we want children to participate in one or the other kind of activity or in one or the other minor game they must participate in uh, these activities so as to derive the benefits here one word is coming uh, on my screen this is peri di cobertin peri di cobertin who is this peri di cobertin can you help me is they said olympics uh, what uh, Uh, is the significance of olympic yes it is is related to olympics inventor great uh, great answer modern on modern thank you teachers your responses are tremendous excellent uh, responses peri di cobertin is known as the father of modern olympics very good rajkumar ji uh, father of modern olympics uh, he had Uh, started modern olympics in the year 1896 in greece so this how probably uh, he is associated uh, with the uh, olympic games and one of his important quote i will just uh, inform you it is not uh, yes uh, i will inform you 1896 is per per perfectly right answer Uh, when a great man comes to write in front of your name i repeat when a great man comes to write in front of your name he does not write who won or lost but he writes how best you have played the game this is what we uh, philosophy should be there that's why we we say participation is more important we have been emphasizing even physical literacy it is not uh, defeating others it is the participation in uh, uh, physical activities and the next point is emphasize physical competence each and every child is endowed with some sort of competences some sort of potentialities through heredity and again uh, what we have to do is we have to ensure that some experiences are given to the child so that probably child may be able to develop those competencies this is what we want that sometimes vivekananda had said about education education is 
manifestation of perfection already man already there are some qualities present in, in in a child and we have to ensure that those qualities are developed to a best possible extent next is cooperative games uh, we must make sure that whenever children they play some games could be there in which by participating in those games every child may say yes i have won the competition can you think of some games whereby when we make them play and every child may say i have won the competition in today's session we will be learning about some games whereby children all those who participate everybody will be the winner and here we have to keep motivating the children we have to just impress upon well done shabash wonderful excellent whatever the coin terms we may use this has to be done there uh, sophia has said kabaddi i uh, do not uh, answer because in kabaddi everybody cannot be the winner okay probably we'll continue with our thing the next is pedagogy for teaching mind games from a point of view of physical education teacher how okay i will be uh, answering your questions uh, after the end of this uh, session because uh, uh, whatever do your queries are there please uh, note down and so that uh, i'll be able to reply to them next is pedagogy or teaching mind games uh, normally whenever the class comes to us we should ensure that no long lecture is given to them it should be as brief explanation as possible and because children they come to the play field not to listen to the lecture of a physical education teacher but to play the game so with the result more of practical experiences are to be provided to the children okay second aspect is arrange a demonstration in case if a game is new then we should ensure that as far as children are concerned we arrange some sort of demonstration with their help and we should explain whatever the important uh, features of a game are there whatever the important rules are there that could be explained to them next is teacher should be fair to all of them he should treat all the students alike all the students are important to him and whatever his decision is given it is based upon the merit and not the liking and disliking of a person again this is uh, to be re remembered and fourth aspect under this is next is uh, teacher should make the children play initially for maybe some time maybe 3 uh, 2 to 3 minutes and then he should stop the game and then he should ask them to think over ponder over what all they have been doing what was their good points what were their weak points what were the good points of the opponents what were the weak points of uh, opponents so that probably when the next time when they play maybe after 3 minutes again they will be playing the same game so the probably their performance becomes better this is what we want and maybe we want thinking individuals and not only uh, this uh, physical effort is not sufficient only thing is we want that this mental faculty also need to be developed next is summarize and appreciate that we should at the end of a class we should reassemble the students and we should explain ab about uh, we should summarize about the game what all went on uh, maybe you played dodge ball that in this game what all you have learned about uh, this game which physical uh, characteristics were developed in the in this game and at the same time he should appreciate that both the teams have put in great effort next is we should praise the effort of the put in by the individual whatever the hard work has been done by the individual whatever the team work has been done by the individual or same same thing about values what values have been exhibited yes yes they have followed all the rules and regulations they did not take any unfair advantage these things are to be appreciated by the teacher and the last one under here they says ask for suggestions usually a teacher should ask them 
how can i be better for you how a teacher can be better for them in the next class what are there is there any suggestion from the side so that probably as for teacher is concerned teacher may be able to uh, uh, this, this make some sort of adjustment make some sort of amendments so that he is able to uh, deliver things as per their liking so this is all with regard to pedagogy of minor games and now we will be going for some sort of minor games here some videos will be there please remember in this uh, games uh, our focus is on participation by all the part participants all the participants should be engaged simultaneously and then some games will be without equipment and some games would be without equipment and enjoy it and i'll be explaining in between next please just now you have seen a game known as tunnel race it is very very clear in this game now you see uh, the important features of this game is no equipment is needed second aspect is everyone is involved simultaneously simultaneously reason being that of course one person is crawling other persons are in uh, the supposed position this gives them an exercise and definitely some of the suggestions are as a flooring is concerned this is very very important i fully agree with the comments of the teachers that in case if we have got a grassy field then only this game could be organized but in case if we have got a uh, mud field or chat ground then this game should not be organized reason being we don't want the children should spoil their clothes so maybe depending upon if wherever possible in case if some grassy play field is there uh, this could be an excellent game but other in case if grassy field is not there and as suggested by some of you the other game could be the tunnel ball uh, you, some of you had suggested whenever i, I asked them and this tunnel ball is uh, that making children stand in a file one behind the other or we require one ball one ball is kept with the person who is in front and all the participants are in astride position that is feet are apart on signal go the individual just bends forward and throws the ball in between the legs of a person and the ball is caught by the person who is at the end and he collects the ball runs to the runs to the front and again repeats it or maybe in case if it is of course there are definitely wooden places are there but i i doubt very much that whether wooden surfaces could be there in a government schools uh, very limited will be there but yes grassy field may be there i am not very much uh, aware of uh, the uh, existing conditions of tamil nadu in case if some grass is there it would be an excellent game for the children where by everybody may participate and they get lot of exercise and please remember children should be this could be arranged in uh, uh, several groups maybe first group uh, could be there about 7 to 8 persons could be there then second group third group fourth group so the maximum participation is there otherwise it takes a long time for the child so that his term may come in so this is what is tunnel race and other was was uh, tunnel ball two the games are there okay next one this game is known as human caterpillar race this may require equipment but this could be easily fabricated in a school because usually what we say is physical education teachers are very very innovative whatever once they get an idea they can manufacture their own uh, equipment also 
and this equipment could be uh, could also be improvised that is usually whenever uh, this uh, sack is there that is sometimes we place we have been playing sack race so similar to that that sack it could be cut and it could be stitched together and some sort of a loom could be formed with that and this sack could be used to take part in the uh, this uh, caterpillar race and in this caterpillar race see the beauty of this game that how much cooperation uh, is being done by the individuals and that uh, whenever the uh, as far as this uh, uh, this uh, loop is concerned whenever it moves forward then only they step forward uh, it could be side is a slightly bigger one so that it uh, just it is just like a tank as a tank moves there that is first is uh, uh, it uh, the chain is uh, on the uh, roll on on the ground and then the uh, spokes uh, they enter there so something of similar nature it could be there or it could be a tent house whereby some marriage functions are there and usually whenever uh, we have got some sort of feast community feast is there or some marriage feast is there in case if one is uh, equipment is known as tart party there is they sit over that and they eat food there so in case if that also could be used there we could stitch it and on the basis of that probably we can make the children do physical activities and once we st stitch it uh, uh, perform the stitch it with tart party it is going to last for years together and uh, with the result that it is it is not going to tear very soon so some such activities could be organized uh, by the teacher through uh, one's uh, uh, innovative approach now we thank you for your uh, comments next one This game is known as balloon train race. All the participants are made to stand in a single line, single file, and after that we give one balloon to each participant except the first one, and then we ask them to put the balloon or balance the balloon in between the chest and back of a front person, in between the chest and back of a front person, and then arms should not be used in between. the usually whenever i make children play this game i always tell them yes interlock your fingers and keep it over the head so that the hand will not be used in order to uh, control the balloon and after that probably they have to move from one place to another it is a wonderful activity this is very good only thing is uh, the front person should only move whenever one feels pressure then only if you are moved and in case if they put too much of pressure balloon is going to burst also in order to avoid this uh, lacuna then we may require some sort of uh, uh, equipment that is volleyball if it is volleyball or handball is there we can put uh, volleyball or handball instead of balloon and still we can make them move from one place to an another and again this is a very very recreative activity fun based activity whereby all the participants they enjoy participating in an activity excellent uh, game for the children but only use of hand is not permitted thank you we proceed to the next one the name of the game is cat and the mouse or bag bakri or uh, we can give uh, any other name tom and jerry also we can give this name and in this game see the excitement of the children how much children are enjoy parts uh, enjoying participating in uh, in this game and in this game everyone is involved 
and uh, then uh, with the result that it requires no equipment at all and thereby as for this circle participants are concerned those who are holding hands we can still make them move in a, either in a clockwise uh, direction or in an anti clockwise direction so that still they are more they become more active and uh, uh, whenever the cat is about to touch the mouse or tag the mouse so much excitement is there as far as all the children are concerned and it is a, a real thrill for the children okay adu palli in uh, tamil great and now we will be covering this game uh thanks uh, teachers uh, you have been able to uh, explain what qualities are being developed in the children thank you very much this now next game is toss and catch in a circle again this is again a very very interesting activity for the children uh whatever children that but it requires some sort of equipment because uh, whenever some challenges are there in case if uh, now these children they are each of them is holding a tennis ball there may there is a possibility that tennis balls may not be available in case if tennis balls are not available still something could be done by the teacher some improvisation could be done by the teacher and as for the improvisation is concerned we can may we can ask children to bring their own balls or make their own balls or sometimes uh, one what we can say is there is a term which we use in uh, minor games is bean bag okay rubber ball definitely rubber balls could also be used or any other kind of a ball which is of similar nature or bean bags could be used what is a bean bag bean bag is a small piece of cloth there inside the cloth we put some tamarind uh, seeds tamarind seeds are there we put them there and we again we stitch it as so those things are concerned again this could be used as far as children are concerned in this game when our children are standing in a circle each player is given a number 1 2 3 4 5 5 and initially we ask each child to toss the ball vertically up and whenever the ball comes down they should catch their own tennis ball that is vertically up going uh, covering a distance of 8 to 10 feet and then they are catching their own ball four five times this is uh, done there and after that because this is a simple movement about uh, children of class 3 onwards they can easily perform these activities or uh, then after that probably we will ask them to either turn right or turn left then they are faced uh, they are there in the, in the circle only and then we ask them to toss the ball up in the air immediately after tossing the ball they have to move forward that is number 1 will catch the ball of number 2 number 2 will catch the ball of number 3 number 3 is going to catch the ball of number 4 and number 4 will catch the ball of number 5 and number 5 will catch the ball of number 1 that is each of them will be moving in a circle and they will be catching the ball of each other initially the distance could be short uh, a small circle could be there once a proficiency increases we can increase the difficulty or we can increase the challenge and the distance uh, the circle the size of the circle could be enlarged there enhanced there and they could do it and in case if the circle is bigger immediately after tossing the ball we can ask them to jog and then collect the, the ball of the partner who is in front, front of them it's a wonderful game for the children it develops uh, so much of a coordination among children that is throwing the ball they should know how to throw the ball it should move vertically and it should of course ball automatically will come down vertically and next thing is that they have to catch the ball catch the ball in a stationary position and then catch the ball in a uh, while they are moving either walking or they are jogging excellent game for the uh, neuromuscular coordination of a person next one falling stick challenge again this is a very good activity for the children usually in physical education we have got a equipment in our uh, uh, store that is known as the wands w a n d s wands and wands could be used here or if wands are not available any stick could be used of course which should be smooth uh, thing could be there or in tamil nadu i am aware that this one actually known as silambam lathi is very very popular so in case of lathis are also available even we can use that lathi in this game what we can do is we can make the lathi stand in a 
vertical position one end touching the ground and from there we are holding it with one hand and whenever signal is given they leave the, their lati and they run to pick up the other lati before the lati falls down or maybe one before it falls down the initial distance could be about 3 to 4 feet let them gain confidence then we can increase the distance to 5 to 6 feet then 6 7 to 8 feet etc etc so that we can uh, increase some sort of challenge for them not only this even this game could also be organized in a similar way as that of uh, uh, toss and catch in a circle that it is it could be uh, uh, falling stick challenge in a circle in a circle also probably five six people could be there and they will be catching the stick of a person who is in front of them an excellent game for them maybe reaction time of individual will improve upon immediately as far as the movement time is concerned or response time is concerned that will also significantly enhance as this game is concerned that is in fun way probably they will be picking up some sort of fundamental motor skills this is what our idea is next one we proceed further you ready See this game. Name of the game is hula hoop pass. Children form a circle. One hula hoop is kept in in the circle only, and all the children they hold hands. In this game, they are not required to uh, leave the hands, and from there they have to pass the hula hoop from their body to the next person, then the next person, and they have to move it. Uh, all the children are there, but in this game, in case if children are more. then each child will get his turn after a long time we want that everyone should be active that is what we want so what what can we do we can have instead of one we can have two hoops that is that's right in front or we can have four hoops there so that immediately everyone gets a chance to, to do it and this will be uh, this is again a wonderful game as for children concerned the same game can also perform in a single file remember two files could be made and some sort of even competition could be organized um, in that game as you have suggested uh, even in files also in lines also this could be there and even at times we have been organized competition among two teams or maybe in among males and females and sometimes i have seen that females have done better in this game then there are males males and probably in case if we get an opportunity we can organize it and we can find out who is better whether the females are better or the males are better also some some sort of competition could also be organized so this is about hula hoop pass next one is balls squat on your toes not on your knees umbrella nice job no no steps yet i didn't say it put it back down okay all right stand up make some waves hold squat now this time listen for how many steps we're going to take okay Umbrella. One step. Back out. Nice job. Okay, listen for the steps again. And you all remember to count together. Umbrella. Okay. This game is known as parachute game i do uh, know that this equipment 
some games re require, are requiring equipment which is not easily uh, within the reach of all the schools. Uh, and uh, there, of course, the NAS movements also will uh, come in here. In this game, normally what uh, we could uh, do is, that in case if this uh, hoop is available, this uh, parachute is available, and this costs somewhere around 8,000 rupees. So I have, we have bought uh, uh, equipment. In case if uh, this is a constraint, then probably we can uh, forget the, about it, or we could think of improvising this game. In case if possible, if some old sadis are there, if we could stitch it together, and probably some sort of like of a parachute game, some improvisation, we could also make it there. Maybe a, a cloth which will not tear easily, and it should be a fairly thick one. And then on the basis of that, some activities could also be performed. We could even think of, but sari will be, again, uh, it, it, it uh, need to be uh, fairly sturdy, fairly strong, or uh, silk saris will not, because it will tear uh, very soon. So that uh, needs to be modified. And on the basis of that, probably we could organize this activity. Again, this activity has got tremendous advantage in one parachute at least 24 people, students are involved simultaneously. If two parachutes are there, entire class, either it is 50 students are there, they could be over there. And in this, the different formations are being made by them. And this is uh, just a basic activity, we are told. And in this game, about one hour session, one and a half hour practical session could also be organized whereby number of activities are given to the children, number of minor games are given to the children, maybe changing their positions, or maybe moving in a clockwise direction, moving in an anti-clockwise direction, or making uh, various formations, maybe sometimes mushroom may be there, or igloo may be there, or umbrella may be there. And along with that, probably a cat and a mouse game, we, 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 uh, we play in this, and it is such a uh, tremendous uh, uh, appeal. Uh, it has got such a tremendous appeal as far as children are concerned. They really enjoy participating in this. So again, uh, these are some activities, but yes, definitely one the biggest drawback is it requires an equipment. Thank you. Next one, we move there. takes a lot of coordination. Okay, as you have seen, uh, this is game is known as cooperative stand-up. In this game, whatever number of students may be there, teacher can uh, divide them into uh, uh, two groups. They will form pairs and pairs should be formed as per the height and weight of a person. So that in case of they are of similar uh, physique, then it would be easier for them to uh, uh, get up. And from in this position, they are facing back to back, hooking their shoulder, this elbows, and then they have to sit down on the floor, uh, and then they have to get up. Again, very, very interesting activity. They need to cooperate with each other. Similar to this could also be, there could be another game Yes, CMS twins, uh, thank you. Very good uh, uh, things are there. And along with that, probably even the CMS circle could also be there. So many people could be involved, even entire class could be involved and let them form two circles uh, back to back and let them hold each other. And after that, the entire class should get up. And uh, of course, uh, this is possible with children, they do it. And in this game, uh, because once everybody gets up, once then with the result that it is uh, similar to our philosophy that everybody will be the winner after having participated in a game this is what we want that uh, people should be able to uh, uh, derive satisfaction yes they have done something uh, whereby they can even proud of themselves but next one will go for uh, a common game
and back to back to the other team who will be the cranes. So the crows, the yellow team, are all facing that wall and the cranes, the blue team, are all going to face that wall. Now as a teacher you can be the leader or you can choose a student helper to be the leader and the leader is going to call out either crows or cranes. So in the first round cranes has been called out. So the blue team, the cranes, will then chase the crows to their side. So the crows are trying to run away without getting tagged. Most of the crows have made it across safely but one player was tagged as we see there. So the crow, the yellow player who was tagged, will then become a crane and join the blue team. Wonderful, and I got a very good suggestion. At least it is always good to interact. And with this, I have learned one uh, new game that is forward roll and backward roll. Uh, that also could also be performed. Uh, excellent suggestion from your side. Uh, thanks, uh, teacher. And I, in this crows and cranes, again the important features are no equipment, and the way teacher organizes the game that is very very significant. That is very very important. That, uh, as far as the, the participants are concerned, initially they stand in the center at least three feet away from each other because suddenly in case if they move, there may not be collision, no child should get injury. And once a teacher is standing at the side, the way a teacher pronounces, I have, whenever I teach this game, I always ensure that I prolong this uh, for a fairly long time. That is, I have been using this word I do it for a pretty long time and with the result along with that sound I do some sort of lunging movement or sometimes fake movements either to the right or to the left and with the result as far as this is concerned this is a, a real thrill for them and uh, maybe best of five or best of seven times competition could be there at the end probably we can decide which team has performed better. So this is Cruz and Cranes or Ram or Ravana or any other name could be given. Next one is. This game, another, is again very, very important game. This name is Meet Me in the Middle. Sometimes uh, we have been playing a game called Good Morning. A very good suggestion from Mr. Uh, then this week, Ravan also we can say, Rama also we can say. Uh, again, very good uh, suggestion because that's why we I had named it Crows and Cranes or Rama Ravana. And in this game, as far as Meet Me in the Middle is concerned, uh, in this we will be dividing the class into two and we'll form pairs. And after that, they will be standing behind a line. Uh, the two lines will be marked at a distance of at least 20 feet away from, uh, 20 meters away from each other. On signal of the teacher, both the teams will run towards or the partners will run towards each other. And whenever they meet in the middle, they will be doing high five and then they will come back. As so this is concerned, we have to have some sort of variety, some variation has to be there. At times they may be jogging, sometimes they may be hopping on right leg or hopping on left leg or it could be hopping on both legs, it could be jumping or it could be a frog walk, uh, frog jump or it could be a rabbit jump, etc, etc or it could even be an elephant walk, etc. Any number of endless possibilities are there. Uh, on the basis of that, probably let them do the movement and let them meet in the middle. And in case of the elephants, let them uh, join their trunks and then they should come back to their uh, own line. So much innovation uh, could also be there. And here, in case if it's a grassy field is there, instead of high five, what we can do is we can make them do one push up. In case, again, it depends upon the ability level of the children. Or we can do, we can make them do one sit up. Or we can do at least one better, any, every, anyone and everyone can, could do it. So likewise, probably we should think of some sort of a innovative activity, lame duck uh, relay. Yes, it could be there, but everyone has to be involved simultaneously. In this game, all children are involved. Uh, that is what we have to ensure, that all children should be uh, doing one or the other kind of physical activity.
throughout uh, the uh, physical education period. Next one. And all the players as well are going to be somewhere around the perimeter of the basketball court. So nobody's allowed on the inside. And as a teacher, you're going to choose a direction for the students to travel in. And they're going to do some sort of, you know, running or skipping or galloping. And when the music's on, the students are going to start traveling in that direction. So while the music plays, they're running or whatever around. And again, not on the inside. When the music stops and the players are going to have to go into one of the hoops as quickly as they can. Because if it takes too long, like the one player at the bottom there took too long, maybe three seconds or something like that. Then if uh, the feet aren't inside the hoops, uh, then everybody will have to do some sort of a strength exercise. So it can be a push up or a tuck jump or something like that. And then uh, they can continue on. So they'd all leave their hoops and then you'd uh, play the music again and they'd go around and around. Oh, this is fitness. Okay, fitness musical hoop. That's why I will be explaining after the video demonstration. Now in this, uh, what is there is name of the game is fitness musical hoop or another name could also be cooperative musical hoop. What we can do is we can spread the hoops either in a rectangular shape or in a square shape or in a circular shape and ask all the participants, all the class uh, children to stand outside the, is my voice uh, clear? Uh, yes, sir. am I audible? Kindly help me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Zanab. Okay. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, teachers. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a minute. It is slightly different from a musical chair in the sense that uh, the all the children will be moving in a either in a clockwise direction or in an anti-clockwise direction outside the uh, hoops and uh, when the music uh, is on then they will be moving uh, in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction then when music stops all the children have to rush to the nearest uh, hoop and they have to stand inside the hoop and while they're standing uh, there's no fast tool that there has to be only one son in one hoop there could be two persons there could be four persons there could be eight persons any number could be there so in a way, it is slightly different from that than that of the musical chair. And uh, um, once this is being done there, and after that, probably the first time we have done it. The second on what we do is whenever the music is on, the children are running around the hoops, we could remove two hoops, reduce the number of hoops, and let the children adjust within the remaining hoops. And similarly, maybe in third time, we may remove two hoops, and so on and so forth. So likewise, we will uh, really see that in the end of a class, in case if 40 students are there, and if only eight hoops are left, then eight hoops, that means uh, uh, five children have to stand within the hoop. And it is really heartening to know, to note that how children, they make adjustment within that hoop. So at times, some children stand over the feet of a uh, participant who is uh, in the circle, in the, in the hoop or one may climb at the back of a person. So it's a wonderful game. And in this game, uh, normally, uh, once the children adjust there, they uh, occupy their position within the hoop. And after, whenever the game is over, everybody is the winner in this game. Nobody is the loser. Nobody with no punishment, nothing of that sort. Everybody becomes the leader. And we give them, at times, ample time to make sort of adjustment. So in this game, uh, again, I'll the hoops are spread there in case if hoops are not available we can do some sort of chuna marking that also is possible if chuna marking is uh, the difficulty then we can put some sort of a rope around this and on the basis of that let children move uh, uh, and perform various kinds of movements even children those who are running they could uh, do sideways running they could do hanuman jump they could do hopping, etc. Various kinds of movements could also be performed by the children so that everybody is involved in activity thing. Uh, with this, we proceed to the Definitely. next game. You hear that flashing line, they're not allowed to enter that area. Now, when the teacher says go, the aim for the students on the blue team is to see if they can get the ball to cross the yellow line by hitting the ball and causing it to roll with that momentum. And the aim for the black team is to see if they can hit that target ball and get it to cross the red line. 
So whatever team is able to successfully do that, they'll be the winners. This game is known as momentum. Again, very, very interesting activity for the children. And in this, we have to make two lines. And two lines should be at least uh, 20 meters apart. And then we can divide the children into two teams. In the center of the field, we could put a, a slightly bigger ball. Hello. Uh, hope uh, I'm... Uh, Audible? Yes, sir. Teachers, uh, help me. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Whether am I audible? Yes or no? Data, sir. Yes, sir. You are Thank audible, sir. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, teachers. Clear. Okay. All those who are having some sort of difficulty in uh, listening to me, probably be, they, may, they may have problem at their own end. Thank you. Thank you, teachers, for your... Uh, responses great okay now i will be explaining about this game a big ball that is physio ball or swiss ball or beach ball could be kept inside the in the center of that area and then both the teams are given few balls it could be a tennis ball and on signal they have to hit the tennis ball at the back of the ball so that uh, as the uh, blue team is concerned, their aim is the ball across the yellow line. Or the black team is concerned, they may ensure the ball may cross the red line. So likewise, best of five, best of seven competitions could be organized and let them hit the ball hard. In this game, they will be learning how to throw the ball in a, uh, as fast as possible or as hard as possible. And accuracy is also involved. Once uh, a good accuracy is there, at least they will be able to strike the ball and the ball will move forward. Because of the momentum of the this ball, this uh, physio ball will move forward. Again, wonderful activity is there. But in this game, one drawback is there. Whenever they are throwing the balls, the balls are likely to go far away. Then they may have to run to uh, collect the ball. In this game, what we can improvise is, initially we had divided the students into two teams. Uh, out of those two teams, again, further division, subdivision could be that two, uh, two more teams could be divided. Say maybe team A and B. Now, in, in team A could be divided into two and team B also could be divided into two. And then one team will be the retrievers. They will be retrieving the ball and passing the ball to the teammates. And similarly, uh, after some time, maybe after five minutes, both the teams will change. The retrievers will become the throwers and throwers become the retrievers. So that everybody gets a chance to uh, play this game called Momentum. Thank you. Thank you. Next one will uh, go for it. We'll have one of the batters will be the runner and he'll head down to the running cones and the other batter will step up to the first of the balls. Now on the teacher's signal, the batter, as you can see here shaking, he'll actually play the three shots in quick succession. That's why it's called rapid fire. And when he's done that, once the last ball's been hit, that is then the signal for the runner who can then start running up and back between the cones. Now, each time he or she reaches a cone, they score a run for their team. Now, to stop the runner from running, what they have to do in the fielding team is collect those three balls and get them back onto the batting tees. So as soon as they've done so, the teacher yells out stop and the runner stops running. Now, the problem with this game is maximum participation is somewhat lacking. Okay, teachers, this game is known as rapid fire. In this game, maybe three balls are kept on the cones and one batsman and runner, they come, bats will hit all the three balls one by one and fielders have to field the ball and bring, keep it back on the uh, cones. The, when these balls are kept on the cones, 
and as far runner is concerned runner will stop running the moment three balls are uh, hit there the runner runner will start running up and down and uh, the moment the balls are kept back on the cones the runner will stop running okay i try to repeat once again this game just a minute please uh, this game is known as rapid fire game it is just like a baseball game but here three cones are kept batsman and runner they come there runner batsman will hit all the three balls and after when whenever he hits the third ball runner will start running runner will start running and he will take the runs fielding team has to again replace the balls on the cones and that time the runner cannot stop but here in this game one drawback is there one disadvantage is there of this game as for batting team is concerned there are two players are active one is the batsman and second is the runner whereas four players they are inactive they are not doing anything can you suggest some measures whereby these four players of batting team they also become active what can we do teachers uh, my class will go on up to 2 o'clock i have been uh, told this uh, am i uh, you aware of this the class is up to 2 o'clock Yes, sir. This has been conveyed to the audience. Say yes or no. Are you aware that the class is up to two o'clock? Yes, sir. Data, sir, am I audible? Hello. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Shashi Kumar ji, thank you. Okay. In this game now, four players are inactive. The batting team. Kindly suggest, based upon your experience. how can we make these four players active your suggestions are needed thank you kindly suggest how to make four players active four batting team four players are inactive use four corners very good very good uh, suggestion and there at least four people will be running there any any other question from your side A great uh, uh, response from your side wonderful probably one more suggestion okay probably one more suggestion could be there uh, that if we can have instead of one run we have five runners still be running one behind the other and in a circle only so like was this could also be there or four people could be made to stand there and they can do a uh, lot of running there so like thank you for your response teachers okay now we will go to, uh, I, I, again a question is there uh, i need your answer whatever games we are playing out that you will not be uh, suggesting any uh, game now you have to create one minor game in your class where there is no equipment available i i want that all children should involved simultaneously no children child should be passive so with the result that which game you will organize and when uh, for the thank at the end of the class no no not now progress okay one spud of course very good suggestion the uh, only thing is i do not know tamil only thing is i no limited only thing is one akkam and other things are there but otherwise i do not know much of tamil please help me oh tag games very good good suggestion hop and touch good good morning very good suggestions from your side teachers and we will proceed sir thanks teachers now is the time for classroom games okay and 
uh, in class with their teachers because I have been uh, informed that this uh, class is going to last for two hours. I had, how we have prepared my son Zainab Muhammad, we had prepared accordingly. So kindly bear with us some more time. Uh, please uh, be with us, maybe about uh, 25 minutes or so. Please uh, be yes, with sir, us. Am I audible? Now, next is mm -hmm. uh, thank you, SAG Games and other uh, your suggestions are most welcome. Uh, uh, very good suggestions. Snash yes. the kerchief. I just was a teachers. Please remember my wording. What do I say? All children should be involved simultaneously in handkerchief uh, game. Snatch the handkerchief. Only two persons become active. Rest of them are uh, inactive. Uh, what I want is that uh, every child should be active. Suggest such a game where every child becomes a dodgeball. Uh, probably we can say yes. Uh, to, to, to some extent, but not everyone as far as the uh, team who is throwing the ball. Find out the leader. This is a passive game. Crows and gains very good. Captain ball is very wonderful game. Okay. Thank you, teachers. Uh, great suggestions from your side. Okay. Now we will go to the next one is, uh, okay, classroom games. In classroom games, sometimes it is not possible for a physical education teacher to take the class on the play field. Reason could be many. One reason could be that it must be might be running outside, and it is not possible to take a class outside. Or the ground may have ground may must have become muddy because of the rain. It is not possible. And uh, sometimes what we can uh, say is that it is too hot outside. A lot of uh, uh, heat is there. And or at times it may be a lot of humid may be there. And sometimes what we say is that it is not possible. Or it may be, uh, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, the, as far as cold is concerned, cold is no problem. So with the result that because whenever this rainy season is there, a teacher, physical education teacher has to take class inside the classroom. What games, what activities could be taken by the teacher in, in a classroom? Your suggestions, word games, Simon says, and these will be come here. Kindly, uh, no ideas that you can uh, do your own things. Vogue breathing exercise, great uh, thing from your uh, side. Thank you. Now, kindly watch the game. Next is, next one. When I say river, you jump into the river. When I say back, you jump back to back. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Do what I say. River. Back. River. Back. Okay, so very simple. Back. Okay, this game, this was just to give you an idea that the furniture of the classroom could be adjusted uh, along with the side, uh, side walls or maybe just uh, on the sides itself. The in between a space could be created. And in the, the game, in the bank or uh, out of river or bank could be there, in and out game, be there, in the pond or out of the pond is there. Uh, oh, these games could be organized there. Achha, what I want is that games should be active. In case if we ask them to medita uh, meditate, some suggestions were there. I personally feel that they are full of energy. Otherwise, they will be uh, uh, doing some of the other mis uh, mischief in, the, in a classroom. Or they will be pinching someone, uh, some uh, individual. So with the result that in order to have it, in case if the game could be slightly more active, it may be better. Okay, this was one such uh, idea. Second idea. When I say... 
Do the Next subtraction. One. Ten minus six. Ten yes, sir. One, two, three, four, five, six, four. Okay. This game is known as uh, math in motion or some integrated activities there from physical education we can also teach some subjects like mathematics or it could be english or it could be some other subject how it can be done is say maybe one example is there then 10 minus 6 that question is asked there a child goes to number 10 then he takes uh, six steps and on the basis of that he gives the answer similarly as in when children go some sort of manual mathematics could also be there. Sometimes addition things could be there, multiplication could be there, division things could be there, or subtraction things could be there. Or as you have rightly suggested, some word making games could also be there so that they are occupied there. Or even in this at times, I what I suggest is there could be some games, maybe uh, what we have been using in physical education, say jumping games. A child, two teams could be formed there. We ask one child to come uh, in front and then one should perform jumping jacks. What is jumping? And the two other one, we take front leaning rest position. Is that front leaning rest position? Probably they should be able to explain it. So with the result that or with some demonstration could be there. Or maybe some sort of uh, asana would be there. Yes, they have to perform say parson. Or maybe as far as this uh, uh, Tadasan is concerned, let them perform various kinds of uh, activities so that they are more active and they participate simultaneously. And if it is possible, we could also then. Zainab, uh, Hindi wala hata denge? Yes, sir. Next, please. Sure, sir, sure. Next, please. Okay, now uh, teachers, you have been giving various suggestions. Now I have got one uh, question for you. Uh, maybe one query is there. Uh, we have to create a classroom game in. Uh, uh, we have to create a classroom game, and uh, where boys and girls both are there, and you have got only one sponge ball with you. One one rubber ball is there with you, and which game you organize? Which game are you going to organize in this in the class with one ball ball pass? Okay, very good. Another game could be there. Thank you once for your suggestion. Ball pass is a fairly good game. Poison ball. Okay, very good. And one more suggestion. One more suggestion from your side. What classroom game could be organized? Okay, dribble, really something of this sort, music ball. Find the ball. You're great. Great responses from your side. And now we will be. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. And uh, we'll be moving further. Next is. Recreational activity in home or outdoors. Uh, what we want is because in today's time, because this uh, uh, Corona epidemic, uh, what uh, children are confined to home. What activities could be engaged by the children at home? And this could be very, very important. And maybe we are giving you some ideas and then you can further develop your own. Next, please. Thank you. Thank you, teachers. Your responses are great. Okay, see the type of activities being performed at home. 
one is the bowling game whereby they throw the ball with the hand and uh, they roll the ball with the hand and uh, as far as the, the, the sticks are there maybe whatever the indian clubs are there or bottles are there plastic bottles are there they have to throw it or in this game now nasis game second one which you had seen the, the, the child actually kick the ball with the instep of the foot so maybe some football skills could also be practiced but make sure that no damage occurs as a class is concerned yoga of course the definitely could be there next one is please okay you have seen so many ideas that varied kind of activities could be organized by the parents or by uh, you can suggest to the parents that these are some such activities which could be organized in the inside the house so that at least they will be in a position to uh, uh, enjoy participating in the games and uh, maybe uh, one or two more games will be just sharing it with you and then we'll be winding up the session today and next please same says clap once clap twice same says clap twice clap once same says clap continuously ja ja but that clap once clap twice <laughs> Simon says, take your right arm and cross in front of your body and then pat yourself on the back for a job well done. The game of Simon Says is officially over. Great job. Yeah. And this is a game known as Simon Says. Simon Says is a very, very popular game. And all of you are aware of this game. I will not be explaining further because uh, I can feel your pulse that you are uh, getting fed up uh, as far as the time is concerned but only thing is please bear with us for five more minutes thank you teachers excuse me that uh, sir this game now numbers and actions that sir that sir am i audible <laughs> one two four Two, <laughs> one, three, two. <laughs> Those who feel that we're uh, kind of slow, a squat, everybody. <laughs> right. Okay, teachers, this is a game known as number sessions that is we divide the participants into two teams form pairs and then we give them few numbers and with each number some associated movement say for example number one whenever i say number one all the participants will do high five if i say number two all the participants will squat down if i say number three 
all participants will do uh, one uh, three sixty degree turn and face each other. So likewise, these uh, could be uh, few actions, and we have a number. Say I say three, then they have to do the same action. Only thing is, it requires some sort of uh, quickness as far as the mental thinking thinking is concerned. So with the result, and in this game, everyone is involved simultaneously, and no equipment. And uh, then uh, uh, Zainab, next, challenge. Next one. Next one, next one, we'll skip this. We will skip this. Okay. Activities with social distancing. Uh, this is now because of uh, COVID-19. The children are having lots and lots of uh, uh, problems that they cannot play there. But only thing is that distance has to be maintained, say maybe somewhere around six feet distance. Um, probably we should be able to maintain and how what all things we could do it some idea is given to you and this will be the probably our last video thank you Glad to use small piece of next piece distance p session so we've each got three bean bags and we've got a hoop we're spread out more than two meters apart time if we can Nice simple starter activity. They go around chasing the ball, so it's important we are in guidelines. As Part one. Datta sir? Datta sir? Am I audible? Am I audible? Please start. Next one. Am I audible, Datta sir? In dance, children are going to work in their own area following the government's social distancing guidelines and create their own dance. The first thing we're going to do is give children a theme to follow. This could be waterfalls, the jungle, pyramids or the Vikings. Even better if you've got a theme that you've been working on in class recently. And we're going to ask them to include high movements, low movements, fast movements and slow movements, as well as different moods such as excitement, suspicion, sorrow, no, Zainab, you're not audible. open and closed movements. This is much better than having children copy dance moves from a YouTube video. Given that the class are going to travel across a set distance while the other quality movements. Give children categories in each round and allow them yes, to. Yes, Zab, your voice is not reaching all of us. Categories might include movements, hopping, skipping, bouncing, turning. You might include animals, cheetahs, snakes, frogs, cats, dogs. Or you might just give them a theme to interpret. This could be space, underwater, roller coasters, the jungle. Here, children are moving their bodies in different ways, which promotes your ABCs and fundamental movements. The class. Key stage one curriculum: jumping, hopping, catching. The key stage two curriculum is about combining movements in sequence. To help with the building of these pathways, you're going to find a partner following social distance rules, and. In target games, children are going to have a small plastic ball which is theirs for the duration of the session. Now the aim is to throw the ball into a hoop or scoring area three times before you move more than two metres to allow your partner to then have a go at trying to improve on your score. Encourage you discovering and accessing Okay, values. teachers, this is all what we wanted uh, to inform you in today's session. Because last portion, last time, uh, the end of this, uh, whatever the limited portion was there, we had to hurriedly uh, execute it because uh, of uh, uh, the responses from your side. Anyway, but only thing is, I just wish to inform you that as far as this dance is concerned, dance is an important element of physical education. 
even there is a body in usa known as afd american alliance of health physical education recreation and dance dance again has to promote it uh, dot bus whether it is aerobic dance or zumba dance or any other thing could be there or it could be the local cultural dances those things uh, would be there then relays could also be organized whereby uh, probably we may be able to develop some sort of uh, fundamental motor skills and movement challenges uh, could be given to them and few target games this is all with respect to as far as today's uh, session on inner games now what i uh, request you is in case if you have got any doubt if any query is there please ask any possible we will try to answer your query teachers you, any question from your side thank you professor datta sir for uh, taking the session on minor games participants if there is any question from your end please post it in chat box professor datta will answer it for you any questions from participants end the in between i saw some uh, teachers asking some questions and that then the, the, that time i told them uh, that please uh, i will answer the questions at the end of the session any some in the questions there will be more happy to answer that okay most of them so, are uh, so thank you teachers uh, thank you sir for your patience uh, patient hearing and uh, you have been uh, actively participating in this session and uh, at least i am uh, happy that i have been able to learn something from you also and maybe again this how what we say is teaching learning goes simultaneously in case if we have been telling something but at the same time we are also gaining something so one goal and uh, zainab uh, we close the session yes, or uh, I have to wait yes, for sir. some more time yes sir that uh, thank you datta sir am i audible audience am i audible sir am i audible datta sir hello am i audible zainab your response am i audible sir can we close session hello am i audible uh, dr amit will be coming Uh, uh, no, Zab, you are not audible. Okay, thank you, audience, for taking part in the uh, session. Please write your uh, message. Thank you so much for attending. We'll meet tomorrow again at twelve noon, and twelve to two p.m. will be the timing. Please note. So we'll meet again tomorrow. Thank you, Datta sir. We'll end the session now. Thank you, audience. Okay, thank you very much, Zainab, and all the teachers. Once again, thanks a lot. Thank you.